say Cliftonville to be precise. That's the Lido behind me. This is called Cliff Terrace. Well, it's the second of my Margate walks. We're heading towards the railway station and we're going to go via the Winter Gardens, the Turner Contemporary, the Old Town, Dreamland, which has had a bit of a transformation, which I'll show you when we get there, arriving at the railway station hopefully in about half an hour. It's a lovely day. It's not the height of the season. It's not even Easter yet, so everything's closed or... Well, most things are, are, are closed, apart from things that are open for the local people. I think we'll go across the coastal walk rather than go all the way around via the roads and the casino. You can see there, there's the casino. Very nice if you like that kind of thing. And um, the backs of buildings here. And of course the sea and various ships out there waiting to get into the harbour either at Felixstowe or to Tilbury. Who knows? I'm not a great maritime person so I won't be able to tell you. This is the Viking coastal trail down there. We're not going to go that way because that would be taking us a bit out of our way I think. We'll go, well, I think we can go this way you see because I've never been this way before to be honest with you. I've always gone on the um, on the main road so via Aldi and stuff and oh that looks nice down there doesn't it a bit of a small beach this looks a bit like a car park I think I'm maybe going the wrong way but let's see let's not be downhearted at this stage we've got to be upbeat and think we're gonna go the right way it looks as though we can keep on walking this is the way I really want to go because I want to go via the winter gardens to show you that and of course Drop down the back way towards the Turner Contemporary. Lots of seagulls giving us nice background noises. I don't know if you can hear that. Whether my microphone is powerful enough to pick it up. But it's um, certainly quite loud here. Where well, I'm standing. Yes, we can walk through here, can't we? And uh, more bit of greenery there. I'm going to switch off and switch back on when we get a bit nearer so let's do that of course we're at the back of the winter gardens this is we're actually standing on the winter gardens now this is probably the main hall in the winter gardens underneath my feet that's what it looks like from up here at the back the entrance is over there on the main road and you walk down those steps or you walk in through the path this is the gardens the winter gardens if you see me hence the name that's the lowers, that there is probably the kitchens and the Queen's Hall and below where I'm standing up here is the main hall at the Winter Gardens which was opened in 1912 I think or 1908 something like that. I'll put, put some text up to let you know exactly what the facts are rather than me waffle on and get it all wrong. But basically this is um, this is the premier live entertainment place for Margate. In its day, it's had the Beatles have played a week here in the 1960s. Laurel and Hardy have played here. Just about everybody's, everybody's just played here. I've done various shows here myself. I've done Margate Rhythm and Rock here on about five or six occasions. I've done the Magic Band, Captain Beefheart's Magic Band in the Queen's Hall way back when. And um, so it's a great place. It's supposed to be closing for renovations in August of 2022. And whether it opens again or not, or when it opens again, who knows. But um, it's a bit sad really, because it's a great place, but it needs a bit of work. And it's um, very historic and got lots of uh, memories in there for various people. And look, there's a, a cannon or two here. Don't often see those in at Margate. Well, you have to come here, basically. Over there, you can just see the roof of the Turner Contemporary. I don't know if you can because obviously everything's smaller on the screen than it is in real life. And it's got the cannon. Don't know if it works or not. Hopefully not. No, it's all being blocked up with a piece of wood. Thank goodness for that. So if the Russians invade, we don't know how we're going to stop them because these have been blocked up with wood. There's a beach. That's the car park if we can just see down there. That's the back entrance, that's the artist's entrance where they load in for the main hall at the Winter Gardens, down there. That's a little secret not many people know about. And that's the car park which they use 
that should come down here. It's very hard to find because you've got to, basically there's about four entrances here. And if you don't get the right one, you go into the wrong place. So, and um, just around here a bit, we'll come round and we'll see the Margate lifeboat station and the Anthony Gormley statue of the man in the water. I'm not sure what it's called. I'll again put that up when I find out because all these things I'm going from a very adult memory. So, but when I get back, I can look at the internet, which tells me everything I need to know. And that's what I'm going to do. Well, this looks a bit sad, doesn't it? Or is it, or is it not sad? I don't know. Granddad, dad. Granddad, dad. I wonder if this is something to do with only fools and horses. I don't know. No, that, that, that was Uncle Albert in that, wasn't it? When they did it in Margate. I'll try and put a little clip in because everybody knows the Chas and Dave song Margate. <laughs> Ah, look, we can see the Andy Gormley man there in front of the Turner in the sea. Can you see that? I'll try and zoom in a bit. That's Margate Police Station, the, the Britannia pub. That's the bit by the Winter Gardens where we've just been. And then just behind that scaffolding there is the Old Town. We're going down there in a bit more of a roundabout route because we're going down towards the Turner, which is right there. There's the RNLI building at the back of the Turner. This is the Turner. This is the view, basically. This is why they built it here. That Turner had of the sea from the landlady's boarding house where he stayed when he came to Margate. And we go down the back. Here. We're coming down from Fort Hill. This is the name. That building there is an old hotel. And that's where a lot of famous people stay back in the day, but it's obviously unrecognisable now. And here we go, down these steps here, brings us to the, brings us to the Turner. That's the shop of the Turner with the view, with a bit of artwork there at the, at the end. But this is basically the shop and there's a really good coffee house restaurant there which I haven't been in since the pandemic hit us but it was really good b b beforehand and there it is now it's not cheap but there again coffee in um, market is particularly cheap these days there we go that's the Turner entrance that's the cafe and we go down to the harbour arm which as you can see is right there and that's the famous lighthouse at the end and of course Manning's seafood stall. So if we walk down towards the harbour arm, the tide's out, which is why we can see Anthony Gormley's famous statue. And of course there's a bit of a smell from the, the seaweed, which you can't really pick up on YouTube, but it's um, I can certainly smell it. It's um, not unpleasant but some people don't like it but when I first came to Margate I didn't know what it was but it is actually apparently rotten seaweed and the council used to spend thousands of pounds getting rid of it every uh, few weeks but now they just leave that for the I think they just leave it for the high season and there's a, another view and that's where we're going to go that's basically the old kept market is collection of cafes and food stalls which is very good you get fantastic bread in there and things like that and it's the place to go for a cup of tea if you don't want to go into the Turner Cafe and there you go let's go down there let's go down to Margate Old Town Ramsgate is only about five miles away from Margate but there's this ancient rivalry between the two towns so it means that a lot of people who were born and bred in Margate or and or Ramsgate don't really come to the other place for some reason because they think, well, the people in Ramsgate think the Margate gets all the money and the people in Margate think that Ramsgate gets a preferential treatment too so you, they can't really win. I must be honest with you, the local council, Thanet District Council, is notoriously awful for lots of things 
pressing the button to cross the road. There's a glorious smell of um, fish and chips on Peter's fish and chip shop, which is just down there. Famous one on Margate seafront. The one in Ramsgate, I haven't been in for quite a long time because during the 2015 election, Nigel Farage was filmed there a lot eating fish and chips in there. So it wasn't really somewhere I wanted to go after that. Oh, we can cross the road now. That's the Ambrette there, by the way. That's a very expensive but very good modern Indian restaurant, which I can recommend. I can only go to the one in Antibri for some reason. And here we are. This is the way into the Margate Old Town. Down there. It's just basically a collection of shops and things which has been taken over by, I suppose you call them, hipsters. Well, that's, is, is that the old-fashioned word for it? I don't know, but that's basically what people think of them as, and it's all sorts of vintage shops and things like that, so it's very interesting for people like me. A lot of artwork, a lot of galleries and things, there's the Crab Museum, things like that, and some very nice pubs and bars, and it's a good place to, to go really. So let's go and have a quick look around, shall we? This is Olby's famous Soul Cafe, which has had a few names in its time, but it's now called Olby's. It's a music venue apart from anything else. Small, it's about the same size as the 100 Club I used to do. Holds about 300 people, I think. And here we are, you can see now that's the, there's a studio there. Paraphernalia, antique, zigzag footwear, which again, I think is the sort of shoes I wear. This is Fort Road, they used to be there. Seems to have gone now. There was a place we could buy old-fashioned fairground, um, basically bits and pieces, and pinball machines, that sort of thing. And he was very rude, the guy that ran it. Because if you went in there filming, he used to jump on you and um, ask you to pay him thousands of pounds for the rights or something. But um, it seems to have gone now, so I don't know if that's relocated. And some more shops, things. This is the sort of thing. This is the museum around the corner. And well, we could just walk around here. This is not the right media for Margate Old Town, is it? To look at the shops and things. So um, we'll just do, do a little taste and then you can pop down later if you want. Maybe I'll do another video about it at some later date if that's what you want. If you do, let me know by commenting down below. And please like this if you do like it. If you don't like it, then you can stop watching now. And please subscribe and press the notification bell because that means you'll get notified whenever I do something like this and post it. And believe it or not, it does take a lot more time than you might think. So if you could like it, that'd be great. If not, do not fret. There's lots of little streets, but they all have the same kind of, sh of shops and cafes and coffee shops. So I get confused being a poor old, old guy. Wellington Hotel, that's actually quite new. Looks though like it's... Um, Close refurbishment at the minute. This is the old town hall, the Margate Museum. As you can see, that's a nice flint wall with, um, I don't know what those arches are called, but they have a special name, do they not? And we're heading down, I say, towards the Dreamland and the railway station. So we'll do a little, we're only at the edge of the old town, by the way, there's a lot more in that direction, which we're not going to look at. There's a Margate bookshop, which is a good place to go if you want to buy a book, obviously. And then, this is a very interesting one, the Bull's Head. This is where Eric Morecambe had his wedding reception. <laughs> I think his wife was the daughter of the, of the landlord here back in those days. There we are, there's a blue plaque about it. Eric Morecambe comic held his wedding reception here. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> and that's the trendy lifeboat across the road where you get all your real ales and your ciders out of the keg. Oh, not keg, the barrel, isn't it? Because the keg is, gives the wrong idea entirely. And there you go, so more of the same across the road. Ye old sweep shop, Mr. Sims. There's one in Ramsgate, but it's closed at the moment due to flood, to damage. So 
So you, all the information here, Ice Cream Bar, Ramsey and the Williams, where Karl Marx stayed here. Of course, he did stay a lot more in Ramsgate, because um, sorry to be so patriarchal about Ramsgate, but um, he was um, his daughter, um, Jenny, lived in Ramsgate, so, so he obviously spent a bit more time there than here. All this looks really good, doesn't it? Like the Wangyandra Cafe. I must have to try these places. And I like the idea of fresh lentil soup, which strangely may seem exactly what I'm going to have for my lunch today. So, and here's another view of the harbour arm. This is the high street here. Start the high street. Going up there to um, that's the it's not as nice as these seafront. That's where you get your Greggs and your McDonald's and all that sort of stuff up there. But we're not going to go there. We're going to keep going on the front toward the railway station and past Dreamland. I should really run across the road now because because uh, this lot these lights don't change very often. Here we go. And I'm on the wrong side of the. Um, barrier but never mind this is what we're here to overcome all these minor things aren't we and this is the famous Margate Beach main beach I think it's called I'm doing a 20, no, a 360 degree circle here, so I hope it's all very good. I think the wind will probably be messing with the sound again, won't it? But sorry about that. Not much I have got my furry thing on, but it doesn't always work totally. And that, of course, over there is the Turner. So let's keep going this way. We're going now, I say, not much further to go. You can, we can see our destination over there. That big council block is called Arlington House, built in the 1960s. A protected building. I almost got a flat there, actually, when I moved to Thanet in 2014, I think it was. Because there was a very cheap one going on. I think it was the 13th or 14th floor. But I didn't really fancy the idea of living up there and I'm pleased I didn't and I went to Ramsgate instead because even though I'm not on the 14th or 13th floor my view from my flat in Ramsgate is pretty spectacular. This would have been pretty spectacular too I think, don't get me wrong but I think I'm, I mean again sorry to be sound so parochial but I'm really more of a Ramsgate kind of person. Over there is the Sands Hotel which is um, quite a fancy hotel. It's not not cheap. Um, it's supposed to be very good, though my friend Joe, Joe Pearson, stayed there and they gave him a room without a window and that was for 150 quid. So he wasn't that pleased, but I think 99% of their rooms do have a window. So if you're thinking about coming over to Margate, then you can stay at the Sands and the chances are, especially if you, you, you ask, especially for a window, you can get a window. And as you can see down there, they're collecting up the uh, seaweed, the seaweed from the front of the beach. And I imagine they're gonna take it away to stop it smelling. So if you can see that, there you go. The view again towards Dreamland. Which again, I will mention, I will come back to this later, but it's been renamed the Empire because they're filming a Sam Mendes film here. And so that's now, I think when we walk down there, we're gonna find it snow, but I don't want to, to surprise you. So let's wait till we get down there. Again, there's the ubiquitous, um, whatever that is, thing that makes noise, which you get all over the planet. Because everything is, everything's either being knocked down, boarded up, or re re renovated. Nothing seems to stay the, the same for long. That, I think, was an ice cream parlour last time I was here. Yes, it was. But it doesn't seem to be an ice cream parlour now. 
So there you go. And that was Primark. I think before that he was CNA, I think, a long time ago. And over there is the famous Margate clock tower. And it has a bell, a got a bell, a ball. I think it's the only working one left in the UK, or it's the oldest working one left in the UK. And um, I'll try and come back at one o'clock, because every day at one o'clock, the ball drops, just to show it is one o'clock. Many people think that um, Margate seafront is not a patch on what it used to be back in the day. Back in its heyday, the 40s, 50s and 1960s, it was a really exciting place to be. I mean, every shop was um, full. I mean, every it had special things in there. It even had a mechanical elephant, which is a big one that children used to ride. It's a bit bigger than me. That used to be a powered, I think, by the clockwork. And it used to walk up and down the seafront here with children on their back. If you can imagine such a thing. Obviously today, health and safety would be all over that. But back then it was quite okay. And I don't know how many died. Hopefully not too many. But it is actually commemorated by Weatherspoons, who call their Margate seafront pub the Mechanical Elephant. This is the Margate Clock Tower. I'll put some information about it up on the thing and the boarding seas down, whether they raise the ball specially to drop it down, I, I don't think so. I think that's supposed to be up personally and it comes down at one o'clock. Uh, so I'm not that desperate to come back if it's not going to work. Well, here we are in the front of the Empire, which is showing the Blues Brothers. And as you can see, Screen one is the Blues Brothers with John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. Screen two is all that jazz with Roy Schneider. And uh, what it is, this obviously is not the Empire, despite the sign. This is basically the Sam Mendes film, which I'll post about in the um, description. Those things there with the red um, covers over, very powerful movie lights. And last week when I was here, these pavements were all covered in fake snow, so that seems to have gone. We seem to have um, thawed out a bit since then. Oh, look at the admission price. There we are, 150 for adults and 120, is it? Can only see it's behind the Christmas glitter. And it's a 120, I think, yeah. Oh, it might be a pound. Oh, it is a pound, yes. Look at the next one. Oh, happy Christmas too. Isn't that nice? So um, normally this sign here wouldn't say Empire, it would say Dreamland, but because of the film it's saying Empire, which is quite exciting, isn't it? Quite new. So I might have to be, come back here and um, do it again when it's Dreamland, so you can see what it looks like. These are all film stuff here. Again, I don't pretend to know what they are or what they do, but it's all jolly exciting. As you can see, there's, there's film people sitting out all over the place to make sure the light-fingered residents of Margate don't steal all their props and um, electrical stuff. And this is more stuff from it, in fact. Built cars from the 19, what, 1980s, I suppose. It? There you go, can you see that? That's the interesting Dreamland. It does say Dreamland, so that obviously won't be in the shot, I would have thought. And that's obviously where they hire the vehicles from. And those are the vehicles. Oh, I know, go watch out, there's a um, thing coming across us. That's what that would get the way. And we'll walk along a bit further. There was a big poster. Oh, yeah, yes, there it is, ahead. And again, they're showing it again here. I'm not sure of the difference. I suppose that's for more more close-up stuff in it and this is for the long shots as they call them. I think it's probably to do with um, con continuity or something, I don't know. I don't know these things because I don't really do much along those lines myself. I just shoot the film and I don't have hundreds of people waiting around in um, 
jackets and things to um, tell people not to stand there and I have to put fake snow down and things because I just go with what's there. Right, this is very interesting because these posters obviously are vintage posters from the time which supposed to be. They've changed them slightly, I know so, because it wasn't, the, the, I believe that when the clash turned, it wasn't sharp music, it was actually straight music. Yes, everything's changed to sharp music. I think straight music was John Kerr's company, and I think I'm certain they did, they certainly did the damned and the roots, I think. But I might be wrong. I might be going from London, because that, that's where I lived at the time, obviously, and where I worked in the same industry. I don't know at the Hope and Anchor Margate. I'm not sure that existed, but it might have done. I don't know. I'm not saying it didn't. Paradise Amusements on Margate Seafront in the 1980s. And there you go. And over there is where we're going to go. Just around that corner is Margate train station where we're going to end up so um, I just put on hold while I take a picture of this for my Instagram account sorry or very thing isn't it and I'll be straight back right I've taken my pictures for my Instagram you'll be pleased to know and we're just going to round off this walk by arriving at Margate train station although personally I'm not going to get a train to Ramsgate I could do but I'm going to go across the road there just to show you that's Margate train station I'm going to go across the road there, which is behind that group of buildings, and catch the, the 34 bus to Ramsgate from the um, Nayland Rock Hotel. Right, it's a tricky bit of road to cross, but I'm managing it. There's a car coming up faster on my left hand side, but I'll get across first. Good. So here we are then. Welcome to Margate train station. That's the Premier Inn, first place I stayed in when I came back to look for places. Stayed for a week there, actually. And the only problem I had there, it was a very cheap, obviously. I think about in those days, it was, what, 2014, 2013? It was, I think, for the week, it was only about 80 quid or something, or 90 quid. Which I think now, you pay that per night, because it's a lot more trendy now than it was then. And... The only complaint I had about the primary market was I used to, well, being a vegetarian, I asked for a corn and sausage, and they used to deep fry them to an inch of their lives. So it used to arrive this brown, hard stick, and no matter how many times I asked them to just to lightly fry it, it came as a hard brown stick. So there you go. An, an interesting fact. No one else will tell you things like that. So stick with me. Thank you for. Sticking with me to, to the end, this, as I say, is Margate Railway Station. That's the seafront over there. That's where we've been, which is the Empire Cinema, which of course is not really a cinema. There's the Turner, the Harbour Arm, the famous lighthouse, ships at Thingybob, Discover Margate, the original seaside, Margate train station. Built in 1926, I think, at the same time as Ramsgate railway station, the, the new one at Ramsgate. If you want to know about Ramsgate railway station and stuff, then watch one of my walks. I did a walk which started in Ramsgate railway station. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, notification bell, comment, like, goodbye.